Now to the pandemic. We're now 21 months in and COVID-19 has claimed more than 700,000 American lives. Along the way, we've seen so many institutional failures and some successes as well. And we hope that there have been lessons learned. Tonight, we're joined by award-winning author Michael Lewis, whose most recent book, The Premonition, takes a deep dive into the missed opportunities to combat COVID early on and the visionaries who saw the crisis coming but whose warnings were largely ignored. Michael, th thank you so much for coming back on the show. Nice to have you here in person. Yeah, good to see you. This time around. So let's go back. When you look at the very beginning of the pandemic, is there a particular moment, a fork in the road, perhaps some kind of policy that could have changed the trajectory of where we ended up? The irony of all this is we created the strategy uh, that was used by most of the world successfully to, to more or less contain it. So you, like Australia, you look at the, 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 the level of death and destruction in Australia, it's much less than it is here. And, it's, and, and it was a strategy of like accepting that that social distancing and masks and all this stuff works right up front, and 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 sort of like, like, de t deciding as a society that that we're all in this together and we're going to cooperate. So that that, that so the first misstep was just like not embracing our own strategy. Such an exceptionally bad performance. And we're also lagging, of course, when it comes to vaccines as well, as far as people who are actually getting them administered compared to a lot of the other large... But like once again, right, we created it. We are the source of knowledge creation, both pandemic strategy and the, these miraculous vaccines. And we're, we're also the least willing to eat our own right. cooking. <laughs> uh, I mean, the rest of the world must look at us and say, like, give us those vaccines, right? right? Uh, so, the, but the, the, when I think of the fork in the road, it's not, it's not exactly one thing, but if you were to look at some of the main characters in the, in the premonition, the, the doctors in the, in the Bush White House, who, who sort of demonstrate to the world the effectiveness of social distancing, people didn't actually be, go back 20 years and they told you it wouldn't work. Uh, but in fact, it, it does work. I mean, it's why you have three and a half times uh, as many deaths, more deaths in Miami than you have in San Francisco. Uh, it's, it's it, places that have embraced it have done much better than places that haven't at, at surprisingly little economic cost, sometimes economic benefit. Uh, but I think they, what they would say is the mist a mistake they made was assuming that if they embedded the strategy in the CDC, in the Centers for Disease Control, that that was enough, that the Centers for Disease Control had the moral authority and the leadership to, to sort of run it and the people would listen to them. Because I think, you know, 15 years ago, they would have. So I think they would say, like, if we go back and do it all over again, we might have, we might have tried to build something outside of that institution that had a different kind of relationship with the American people, that, that, that built a kind of trust. Uh, that they didn't have, or and a, a boldness that they didn't have. You know, back in May when you were on the show, um, I asked you based on something that you had written in the book, did you feel that Joe Biden ended up being a Winston Churchill or Neville Chamberlain? At the time, the jury was still out. You said, you know, it was too soon to tell. Uh, four months later, do you have a response? Oh, it's been, they've done their best. I mean, they walk into a really difficult situation. I mean, the problem now, if you look at, in some ways, we are less prepared to deal with a new pathogen than we were 18 months ago because the country, the attitudes towards federal leadership is so hard, so hard. and the attitudes towards the idea of the, of the strategy have so hardened. So you'll have a third of the country right away saying, no, we're not going to do this. And there's a, you know, I, I think Biden's been been really good, the vaccine mandates and, and doing his best to charm people into taking the vaccine. So uh, I'm going to kind of piggyback off of something that you just said. Would you say that another pandemic is inevitable and that we are not prepared? We are prepared. It's so inevitable is a strong word, right? But even right now, we're playing Russian roulette with evolution. I mean, that, that, that even with just COVID, uh, every time it replicates or every twi two or three times it replicates, it mutates. And we've seen it can mutate into other things. And it can mute. There's no reason why it can't mutate around the vaccines, right? Um, so you could get out of COVID a whole new pandemic. And you were clearly in a different kind of environment than we were, I don't know, 100 years ago, where the relation, our relationship with nature is broken, that things jump from animals into people much more 
frequently than they used to. The world's more interconnected. The, the environment, I mean, it's just no longer, a, it's no longer a, a huge surprise. It won't be a huge surprise if there's another pandemic. So is it likely? I don't know. It's not inevitable. Uh, but, but so are we more prepared? In one way, yes, and it's that, I mean, it's, it's these miraculous vaccines. They can be produced more quickly and tailored to the, to the pathogen, and th th that's, a, that's, the, that's the good thing. The bad thing is we haven't really addressed uh, what's broken in our public health system. That it, it's not really a system. It's 3,000 disconnected local public health officers that do, may or may not do what the CDC tells them to do. It's a, a fractured country. country. And, and you mentioned a little while ago the idea of the virus is spreading from animals to people. A million dollar question here. Do you think that we're ever going to know how COVID originated and how important is it to answer that question? Everybody I talked to, the characters in my book would tell you this did not come out of a lab. It came out, it jumped from a bat into a person, you know, that it, that, it, that all the, that all the evidence suggests that. But it, actually the question is not that important because our response to it has revealed a weakness in our society that could very easily be exploited by a malicious actor now. I mean, if you're trying to bring down the United States, this is an easy way to do it without warfare. They're not going to cooperate. They're not even unified enough to stop themselves from, save themselves from, from, uh, from um, uh, an, inf an infectious disease. You manufacture the disease. You know, you've been certainly very critical on the early response to the pandemic. How would you say we're responding now at this point? Still bungled? Well, that, the, the good thing that's happened is the vaccine. Everything else uh, is really discouraging. So, for example, um, one of the things that should have come out of this, and it has in some parts of the country, is an awareness of the importance of the public health officers. 30-something states have passed laws to limit the authority of the public health officers uh, in, in, the, in the last year. Uh, so they weaken the role needed to be strengthened in various ways, not just not just the legal authority, but the the social the social influence and also the just the like like the resources available to the, the local health officers. They've been starved for two generations. Instead, we have undermined them and undermined the role. And that's I mean, it's like it's like saying you're going to go into a war, but first you're going to get rid of all the people who are really good at battlefield, battlefield command. Mm. You're, going to, you're going to war without the capacity to organize your forces against it. Michael Lewis, thank you so much. Always good to talk to you. Appreciate it. The Premonition is available wherever books are sold. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.